This video predicts the NBA's Western Conference standings. Right quick though, just 12.3% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a thumbs up to support my content as well. Number 15, the San Antonio Spurs. San Antonio's morphed from rebuild mode to a blatant tank job after trading DeJounte Murray to Atlanta. Keldon Johnson just suffered a right shoulder injury, which is going to keep him out for the start of training camp. An attempt to land the 7'3 version of Kevin Durant in 2023's draft, Victor Wembenyama, the Spurs have solid reasoning for being horrible. Number 14, the Houston Rockets. Jalen Green's coming off a rookie year where he averaged a second best among first year players, 17.3 points per game. Third overall pick out of Auburn, Jabari Smith Jr. provides Jalen with a solid pick and pop guy. And Jabari's also a nice compliment to Alperin Shengun in the front court. If Houston can land another solid young piece in 2023's draft, they could be right back in the mix come 2024. Number 13, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Gonzaga product Chet Holmgren suffered a season-ending injury at the Drew League, which was some of the worst news of the offseason. With that said, Sam Presti drafted two players both named Jalen Williams, who are both versatile, multi-talented wings, but it was Usman Jang who they took with the number 11 pick, who may have the most potential. Unfortunately, the post-Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook era continues to be strenuous for fans in Oklahoma, and it'll be another year of losing. Number 12, the Utah Jazz. Danny Ainge got an A-plus return for Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, receiving a combined seven unprotected first-round picks in exchange for the two All-Stars, giving the Jazz one of the brightest futures in the association. Number 11, the Sacramento Kings. The duo of De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis almost led me to predict a playoff appearance for Sacktown, but the team just doesn't have enough depth to compete in a low-key deep Western Conference. Number 10, the Los Angeles Lakers. LeBron's still a top five player who can upset a higher seed if LA sneaks into the playoffs, but it's extremely difficult to trust the health of Anthony Davis. And as much as I think Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook is a decent guard tandem, it's tough to imagine the continuity maintaining itself off the court throughout the 82 game grind. Number nine, the Portland Trailblazers. Acquiring Jeremy Grant gives Dame time more help, but when Rip City traded probably the best player in the game to never make an all-star team in CJ McCollum, it signaled rebuild. Like LA has in LeBron, the Blazers have a superstar in Lillard, so sneaking into the playoffs could be big time for them. Number eight, the New Orleans Pelicans. The rising Pels are only this low because of how deep the West is right now, but expect them to be a lot higher in the conference in the coming years. New Orleans was without their 27.5 point per game score all season long last year in Zion Williamson, but still made the playoffs, so you could argue they should be a lot higher. Number 7, the Minnesota Timberwolves. The T-Wolves made an extremely bold win-now move by dealing for Rudy Gobert, and the team expects to be in the championship picture. With the Stifle Tower adding to a prestigious young big three of Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell, and Carl Anthony Towns, it's certainly possible, as Minnesota's a big reason for why the West is so deeply talented. Number six, the Denver Nuggets. It's all about Jamal Murray's return in the mile high, as the Blue Arrows ACL is fully healed and he's ready to go for Nuggets training camp. How quickly can he find a rhythm though, is something I'm concerned about, and Monte Morris was a big scoring punch that the Nuggets lost off the bench. Look for Busy Bones Highland to have a big year in the role Monte played, and the back-to-back -back MVP in Jokic getting back his second option in Murray, who as he showed off in the bubble with an all-time duel against Donovan Mitchell, can take over as the number one guy come the postseason, that all secures the Nugs a number six seed for the second straight year. Number five, the Memphis Grizzlies. John Morant's superstardom is becoming widely acknowledged after he averaged 38.3 points per game over three outings in the West semis before suffering a bone bruise in his right knee and missing the rest of the series. The criminally underrated Desmond Bain took seven three-point attempts and made an NBA second best 43.6% of them last year. He and DeLon Brooks gave Memphis four 16 plus point per game scores in 21-22. Only problem is, one of those four players in Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to miss the first four months of the season after surgery on a stress fracture in his foot. That's why Memphis isn't higher than number five. Number four, the Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul hit the biggest shot of his life to pull the Suns within 42 points in Game 7 against Dallas. 
legendary stuff from CP3. But despite losing a big piece in JaVale McGee, Phoenix still has one of the deepest teams in the association and a top trio of Paul, Booker, and Ayton. Number three, the LA Clippers. After every day was leg day for Kawhi Leonard in the midst of recovering from an ACL tear, he looks primed to get right back to what he was doing before he went down. Paul George's playoff history is questionable. Who knows if John Wall can shake off the rust, but what actually fuels the Clips to the third seed is their extremely talented core. Norman Powell played just five games last year, but he posted over 21 points per game in them, and from there, the Clippers have complementary weapons with different skill sets, like an inside-out scorer in Terrence Mann, a 3-and-D wing in Robert Covington, a playmaking shot creator in Reggie Jackson, and a paint beast in Ivica Zubak. Number two, the Golden State Warriors. Outside of Dante DiVincenzo and Jamichael Green, the depth of the reigning champion Warriors will have to rely on its young players to take the next step. Andre Iguodala coming back for another year is huge for the development of Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. Look for Klay Thompson to be much better this season, for Stephen Curry to have one of his best years, and for Jordan Poole to average 20 plus points per game. The dubs will be in the championship mix, as they usually are when the greatest big three of all time in Steph, Clay, and Dre are all intact. Number one, the Dallas Mavericks. You could be shocked that I have the Mavericks over the dubs, considering they lost Jalen Brunson, but Christian Wood is the best big man Luka has ever played with, plus the addition of a solid starting center in JaVale McGee gives the Mavs both an above average rim protector and finisher. Selecting Jaden Hardy with the 37th overall pick seemed to be a steal, as Jaden averaged 15 points per game in the summer league, I was impressed with Hardy's mix of explosiveness and shooting chops off the bounce. He should be a big piece for the Mavs organization in the next decade. Maybe Jaden can develop into another top wing player next to Doncic, but while the Mavs are still looking for that second superstar, Christian Wood gives Luka a pick and roll partner he's never had before. And the reason I'm not too worried about the loss of Jalen Brunson too much is because Spencer Dinwiddie is continuing to learn the ins and outs of this Mavs system. He's a high volume scoring guard who should take the shot attempts that Jalen had and run with them. I asked this about the East yesterday, but who's the most underrated team in the West? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's winner is Aaron Barton, who says, I believe the Hawks are the most underrated team. Hawks had a top two offense last year and a bottom five defense. If they can bring their defense up to even average and stay healthy, I believe they can be contenders. Murray wasn't the only defensive minded player they picked up. And since Trey is the center of their offense, I think they'll stay top two or three. The story is yours and Community Speaks, so leave your take on today's question.